Hello, I am Dr. Sridhar Kalyana Sundaram, consultant neonatologist. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for uh, coming here again and thank you for subscribing, keeping your notifications on. I hope you are able to share these videos. I mean, sharing them to individual colleagues works better than sharing in groups. So if you are able to do that, please uh, support. And uh, this is not strictly the NRP series, but it's a video on uh, delayed cord clamping which has something to do with newborn resuscitation and you may be aware that the ACOG 2020 guidelines uh, and it's an update of the previous uh, guideline has come out in December 2020 and uh, it times with that as well so just a quick overview on uh, what delayed cord clamping is and how it helps so we have the feto placental unit so the circulation is common to the fetus and the fetal part of the placenta and 20 to 60 percent of the total blood volume of the fetal placental unit is in the placenta at any given time so it's a big range obviously it depends on the circumstances sometimes you have uh, what we call placental transfusion where some of the blood from the fetus then goes into the placenta and the other way around as well so it's a big range and the circumstances the activity of the fetus and so on contribute to how much and the state of the uterine contraction so when the uterus is contracting in labor more blood is in the fetal side so that's nature's way to ensure that more blood is in the fetal side so this is the fetal placental unit and as i said earlier the blood that's circulating in the fetal side of the placenta is the same blood that's circulating in the fetus as well and the blood volume that is there in the placenta is meant to be the blood volume that's inside the lungs the fetal lung does not breathe and because of that the lung uh, the placenta is doing the breathing for the baby and that's a good way to conceptualize why this blood volume should actually come back to the baby once the lung opens up and uh, this is the fetal circulation to illustrate the umbilical vein coming into the portal circulation and then the inferior vena cava. This is the oxygenated blood that's coming through and the umbilical arteries come through uh, with the deoxygenated blood and the waste from the baby to the uh, umbilical circulation and it enters the sinuses and comes back through the vein. So we have the uh, temporary circulatory options as well. The lung is not breathing and it gets only 10% of the blood flow while after birth the lung gets the equal share of the blood flow. So uh, we have 50% uh, of the blood flow at any given time in a child or an adult going through the lungs and the rest of the blood is in the circulation while in the fetus the lung has only 10% of the blood flow um, just to support the growth and development of the lungs while the rest of it is going through uh, the placenta which does the oxygenation. So once the cord is uh, clamped this blood which is left in the placenta is wasted if it doesn't come back to the baby on time so we should wait for the clamping to happen till the lung opens up the oxygenation starts and the pulmonary vasodilatation happens so the systemic pressure drops and the blood flow coming into the baby uh, floods the lungs and so the placental uh, circulation is nearly emptied Placental transfusion has been described for a long time and uh, in 1974 Yao Vettel explained that when cord clamping was delayed the blood volume was 33% higher compared to the babies with early clamping. So cord clamping was an artificial maneuver which we designed to make it quicker as well as uh, more clean. Uh, however it crept uh, into the time and instead of uh, like 20 to 30 seconds we started doing it even faster and so we had to actually start thinking of delayed cord clamping when actually that's a more physiologic way to do it so what is a normal way has become something that needs to be taught why should we do delayed cord clamping so we have significant evidence both in term and preterm babies to show benefit so the cochrane review in preterm babies had 15 studies and of course there are more studies now and i will discuss the uh, more detailed meta-analysis that was published in 2019 as well so this cochrane review had 738 infants between 24 to 36 weeks gestation and a delay range of 30 to 180 seconds though in most preterm studies it was 30 to 60 seconds the delayed cord clamping group showed fewer infants requiring transfusion for anemia there is less intraventricular hemorrhage this is in the cochrane review but it doesn't uh, hold in the recent studies there is a lower risk for necrotizing enterocolitis as well 
um, because of less hypotension possibly so both the IVH reduction and any risk reduction could be due to uh, improved circulatory stabilization because if the preterm baby has a low blood volume and uh, part of it is left in the placenta they are likely to be more hemodynamically unstable and so the effect on the blood pressure and so on is more marked in the preterm baby they are sicker they have a lower blood volume and the impact of any blood left in the placenta is going to be more on these babies in term babies also the Cochrane review uh, shows that it's very safe for the mothers there is no significant difference in PPH mean blood loss or the maternal hemoglobin so there is no need to worry about the maternal health when it comes to delayed clamping in terms of neonatal outcome the mean birth weight is significantly higher in the late cord clamping group as they get more blood volume uh, fewer infants uh, in the early cord clamping group required phototherapy so this is a significant difference even though the duration of phototherapy or the significant increase in jaundice is not high uh, hemoglobin is significantly lower where the cord is not delayed and uh, the difference is about 1.5 grams per deciliter. The more important fact in a term baby is that iron deficiency is uh, twice as likely in the early clamping group. So delayed clamping reduces the risk of iron deficiency and as you know iron deficiency has significant implications for the brain development and the critical stage of brain development. So uh, very important that we do delayed clamping in term babies as well. There is no significant significant difference for neonatal mortality of GAR score less than 7 at 5 minutes or risk of admission to the neonatal unit. So uh, the rate clamping produces an additional 35 to 50 milligram per kilogram of iron and this is quite an important aspect to store. So 33% uh, reduction in uh, risk of having the deficient iron stores, the ferritin level tends to be high and there is uh, fewer uh, infants with ferritin less than 50 which is a predictor for iron deficiency. So what are the recommendations? We have multiple organizations supporting delayed cord clamping. So the European Association of Perinatal Medicine, Society of Obstetricians in Canada and the ILCOR all support 30 to 60 seconds delayed cord clamping in term and preterm infants who do not require resuscitation. The WHO recommends as well uh, the same way. The ACOG, the guidelines, the update which I mentioned now, the NRP update 2020 as well as the AAP all support delay in cord clamping for at least 30 to 60 seconds in vigorous term and preterm infants. Milking is not recommended as an option in the very preterm babies below 28 weeks. We will discuss that as well. The Royal College of Obstetrics and Gynecology in UK recommends deferring umbilical cord clamping for at least two minutes. They are quite able to do it because it's mostly a midwife-led obstetric service in the UK. So what are the practical aspects to approach cord clamping? So uh, temperature care is important in the labor room as the baby will not be under the warmer for that 30 to 60 seconds. Uh, position of the baby, there has been a recent study and this is mentioned in the ACOG update as well that uh, the baby should be uh, the study comparing below the introitus versus at the abdominal level doesn't show any difference in the hemoglobin so even in a vaginal delivery baby can be kept on the abdominal wall or 20 centimeter below the introitus in the cesarean delivery uh, baby can be on the abdominal wall or just beside uh, the obstetrician is holding beside if the cord is long enough uh, skin to skin care with the mother can be started in the cesarean delivery baby and uh, in a cesarean delivery some obstetricians have the practice of lifting the baby to show so please avoid doing that it should be at least at the mother's level holding below is not essential as the study i mentioned showed Duration preferably 30 to 60 seconds in both term and preterm babies. In a preterm baby, sometimes they don't breathe soon after delivery, and you can feel the cord pulsations. As long as the cord pulsation shows a good heart rate, do not panic because the circulation is active for the baby, the oxygenation is happening through the placenta. The baby may have uh, a primary apnea, for example, or they may be just be sluggish and starting to breathe. So if the heart rate in the cord is around 100 beats or more, you can request the obstetrician to feel that and then they don't need to panic you wait for at least 30 seconds if the baby needs resuscitation due to any reason you have to exercise caution if the heartbeat is low when you feel the cord pulse for example you may need to uh, take the baby quickly milking of the cord can be considered but not in the very small babies as we will discuss there is a slight increase in the need for phototherapy but as most babies are monitored for jaundice and uh, managed uh, it doesn't significantly change the time to discharge even though they have a higher hematocrit 
uh, the blood volume is increased as well so the viscosity related side effects of polycythemia doesn't happen so even if the hemoglobin is a bit high they don't face any problems because it goes with the increased volume and the blood viscosity doesn't increase there is no increase in risk of respiratory distress it's very important that the team is educated appropriately and thankfully over the past four or five years almost all uh, obstetric units have started adopting this wholeheartedly and family involvement is very important as well.